Levi says, Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am Yahuwah. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much for joining us here at Remnant House, the home of the strong and the very courageous. And every single week, Mom and I and all the members of Remnant House, all of us that are out here, join together. We welcome you into this Sabbath day, remembering to keep it holy. Amen. Yes. And so we yes. join together and we gather together in his spirit. Uh, in his love, amen, and we walk together, and I just, I greet you all with a, with a holy kiss, and I'm so thankful for every one of you that take the time to gather together, to unite with your brethren, to unite with him and with your brethren, amen, and so when we gather together on the Sabbath day, we're uniting first with him and then with our brethren. It is a powerful picture, and one that I believe that we need to maintain, and in fact, double down on if you will because you know how many know they're doubling down on evil out there they're doubling down on wickedness and so all the more reason for the saints to move all the way into his presence oh hallelujah and there's a move of his spirit going on right now to draw the chosen the chosen and i want to tell you that is a beautiful thing and so if you are among those that are being awakened in this hour maybe you're one of those people that are suddenly asking new questions, questions you never asked before, questions that you didn't even know were at issue or at odds with him, and you're now asking them. And I want to tell you, when he sends strong delusion, that's different than the devil's strong delusion. Okay. Okay. okay, the devil's strong delusion you can pick through. It's a little easier to get through. His strong delusion, when he says he sends strong delusion, that is only he can get you through that. Only he can give you the answers to that level of strong delusion, and he does that. He sends things to see if you're sincere, to see if you really, truly love him. And, you know, he's moving toward a wedding, saints, amen? And so there are many people that are not passing that examination because they, they took it lightly. They took it as if it were not a big deal, as if it were not the most important thing. Remember, this is a race. We're supposed to be running for our seats at the wedding. Amen. And there's a lot of lollygagging. <laughs> it's not love when you're lollygagging. You, know? <laughs> you can't call it love when you when it's lollygagging. Right. When it's just taking your sweet time and you have no no you know urgency in your spirit. You know what I'm saying? And there's nothing there, um, and it's just taking your sweet time. That is not the same as those who are diligently seeking Him and pressing toward a mark, the high calling which is in our Mashiach. And we're running out of time, amen, and amen. And so today we're going to be starting a discussion, and I believe we're going to keep right on talking about this all the way up to the fall feast. So if, if the subject of him and how much we love him is one you don't like, then this, this whole series won't be so, you won't want to, you won't want to hang out with us at all over this next few weeks, because all we're going to talk about is his love. All we're going to talk about is why we love him so much, amen, and why we do what we do. Now, there's a lot of people that are going to be making mistakes in these days, and their hearts are going to be showing. I like to say your prayer life is showing, amen. Your heart is showing. And so those that are seeking to save their own lives, there's a whole lot of folks just trying to survive. How I many know there's a lot of survival camps? Go find one if you're just a survivor. Yeah. Okay, go find one. Don't bother us. Okay, if all you're looking for is a survival camp, oh, please, there's thousands of them. Go find one. 
You don't got to drive nowhere. Just right in your own state. And if you can't find one in your state, go make one. There'll be plenty of people that'll just want to survive. You can find plenty of people that'll just prepper with you. Lots of preppers out there. I mean, and so if you're a prepper and that's your whole mentality, you can find brethren that are just like you, that are just prep for, you know, like, because that's what I think of when I think of that. I think, oh, hunker down and hold on for dear life, white knuckling it right through, you know, and I know there's people that are, that's their main concern. They're looking to save. They're looking to be preserved, right? They're looking to get from the trouble. And I get that. And for that reason, he's raising up a lot of shepherds. And they're all over the whole 50 states if you're in the United States. If you're outside the United States, they're all over the world. They're all over the earth. All you got to do is find one and then get all in. Wherever they are, as I said in the spring, find an apostle, get with him. Find Yahoo will tell you what to do, and that apostle will bless you. Amen. He'll protect you. It'll be a place of safety for you. And so those of you that don't know where those are, well, he'll point them out as things start to, as he wipes out the fakes, <laughs> the real will emerge. Amen. Some of you can see through that already. That's not easy to do in this hour. So he has to first deal with the fakes. As he said in Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 1 and 2, he is going to deal with the false shepherds. He's going to deal with those that scattered his, his flock and drove them away. Amen. And so understand that that's the hour that we're in. And not everybody, you, you all have to know your fold. Everybody has to know where they belong. Amen. And for those that are part of this house, this is a very unique house on a very unique mission. And so if that mission isn't yours, if you're like, I don't identify with that mission or whatever, then this isn't your fold. <laughs> Amen. And go find the fold you identify with. Amen. And so we're those who lose our lives. Yeah. We're not trying to prep and save our lives. Okay? We're the ones who give our lives. So if you're not trying to give your life, this is not the house for you. This is not the place for you. Amen. And I'm just going to keep it real for you because I know a lot of people just trying to save their own lives and they end up coming to us and we look at them like, well, we, you found the wrong spot. Because we're willing to lay our lives down for the sake of our brethren. And that's what the apostolic call is. That's what an apostolic house will do. And that's what he's called all of us following after our Messiah to do. But not everybody takes that seriously, right? Some people pay only lip service to those things because they don't really love him. Amen. But those that really love him, they don't think twice about it. They're given their life because that love required it. Amen. And so there's no way to, to, there's no comparison between the two. One dates, the other gets married. Come on, saints. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, preach that. And we're going to get there today. We're going to get there over these next few weeks. We're going to talk about his love because it's only his love that will get you through what you're going through. So many people right now operating in fear. Okay? And this is one of the things that he continues to put in my spirit to address that fear has torment and the fearful and unbelieving have a fate. The fearful and unbelieving have a fate and it's not a good one. So being fearful and unbelieving is not a good thing. And a lot of people are going to end up there fearful and unbelieving. But if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. So you see, <clears throat> and those that think they can sustain themselves are going to find that they can't. He, he was very specific in the prophetic word that he gave me. He said that when I removed them from Egypt, did they sustain themselves? No, they did not. Well, did they protect themselves? <laughs> no, they did not. He protected them. He defended them and he wasted even the chiefest of them from before his face. That's what he said. And so he said he's going to assemble us like he assembled when he pulled us out of Egypt. Okay, this is a greater exodus than the one that was before us. This is all detailed in his scripture. This is not me just telling you. This is what he has said. Yeah. So his word is on the line. He is, he is going to perform his word. Those of you that thought he was not serious about it, maybe you did hear that prophetic word 20 years ago. I know there's several of you that have been following our broadcast, maybe now just catching up to me. Hello. <laughs> I'm still here, right? And, uh, and you're going... Whoa, you mean he was serious about that word? I heard that word many years ago. I heard that word when it came out on the Prophecy Club. I heard that word. Maybe you were in the audience. Maybe you're one of those people. If you are, please write to me. I'd love to hear from you. Um, but maybe you're one of those people that you know heard that word years ago or maybe heard it on YouTube somewhere back there and didn't really think, is that really, really, truly coming to pass? Right. Okay? And he gave a word to the Americans. 
and he's speaking. And when the sovereign king of all creation speaks to a nation, that nation needs to listen or it will suffer the fate that he said that would will suffer. Now he said, I will pluck it up and it will be remembered no more. That's a hard word for a nation. And he is warning all the shepherds who lie and who refuse to repent for their lies. And he keeps warning them because it's love that warns. Love says to the pastor, please sit down. Please stop. Please stop right here. You were trained by Jesuits. You were trained by the Illuminati. You were trained by people who lied to you. Now, it's not your fault, sweetheart, but you do need to sit down. Okay, because you're going to get yourself in trouble. So just sit down and stop talking the lies that they taught you because much of what is being preached today is completely lies. And stop buying other people's sermons. Yeah, there's a pastor out there going, oh, you did not just call out my... Stop buying other people's sermons. Stop doing that. You go on these websites and you're buying sermons and that's how you get misled. And they're selling sermons and many of you minister... Uh, People out there listening didn't know that, but pastors buy their sermons. There's people that are writing sermons, okay, and sending them to the pastors to preach to you. How's that any different than the news? You need a now word. You need a word that he incubates inside the heart of his servants and delivers to you in time, on time, and because it's the right word. For now, amen? That's how we know we're hearing from the Spirit, because he gives you a now word. I know ministers, people that are supposedly standing up that could not pray impromptu. They have to write out their prayer. They can't pray, just, just stand up and pray. They have a hard time. And, and, they're, and if they're listening right now, they know I've just called them out because I've heard them say it. I've been in meetings with, with ministers, supposed ministers of denominations, and they, they talk about it like it's a difficulty just to, just to do a 10-minute prayer, just to pray. Saints, if you got to write down your prayer, you got no business ministering to the saints. That's right. yeah. No business at all. If you buying sermons, you got no business ministering to the saints. Right. You're not hearing any now words. See that? And that's who's standing up. Yeah. And they spend three, four days writing out everything they're going to try and tell you. What? See, if you don't know the right way it's supposed to be, if you don't know how it's supposed to be under the anointing, you don't know how crazy that looks yeah. from heaven. But if you are looking down from that perspective, you realize that's not love. That's management. That's manipulation. That's indoctrination. That is not his love flowing. I mean, and so when he sent out messengers, he sends them out in his love. Oh, hallelujah. He sends them out in love. He sends them out full of his love. Even in their rebuke, it's filled with love. Even the correction, filled with his love. Amen? And so if they're not coming from his presence, if instead they're coming from some book, they're coming from someplace over there, they don't even know if what they're telling you is right. Mm. Please just, I'm just helping you. Please just sit down before he takes you off planet. Amen? It, it just do yourself a favor. And if you are one of those that said, no, I'm not going to say, I'm going to learn. Well, then in that case, you better be prepared. If you're going to, if you're not going to sit down, okay, well, then you be prepared to give an accounting for a real vessel. And that means you cannot, you need to realize the strict judgment that's coming. Okay. And so again, a lot of people up talking, a lot of people up wanting to express themselves and that's wonderful, but they were never called. Okay. Or they're leaving their lane. That's another one that's going on around here. A lot of people leaving their lane. So they're called to do one thing and they start talking about other things and getting into other things and things that are not for them. All right. Again, another danger, saints. And so out of love, he is speaking to all of us to say, come on home, get to your fold, find your place, find your gift, find your calling, find your purpose and be found faithful with that. Don't worry about what your neighbors are out there doing. Just love on them. You be found faithful to finish your course. There are way too many people looking around what other people are doing and not doing the assignment that was given to them. So if you're watching this broadcast, I pray that this Sabbath day is a redoubling down on your assignment, Amen. on what it is you're called to do, to do it in love. Amen. And so we're going to turn to Leviticus chapter 19. We're going to start there in the Torah. And we're going to talk about this very serious issue, but we're going to begin from a place where most people are. Because actually, as much as we like to pay lip service
to the topic of love, here's where most people really are living. And this is what is going on right now in the body. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 16, it says, And thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer, uh-oh, as a Facebooker, as an Instagrammer, as a YouTuber, as a Twitterer, with, now listen to this, and this is about, this is about carrying things, right, that belong, the tail bearer means you're carrying a tail or telling things you shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. It's a gossiper, all right? Thou shalt not go up and down as a gossiper or tail bearer among thy people. Oops. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am Yahuwah. He's the one who stands. You are not the one who stands against your neighbor. He does. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. You see that? Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any ways rebuke, thou shalt in any ways rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge. Look at this now. You see this? Thou shalt not avenge. So there's a lot of vengeance out there. A lot of people get grumpy, mad, try to take things out on each other, right? None of this is appropriate before him. Even if you think you're right, even if you think you're righteous, even if you think your point of view is correct, that doesn't give you an excuse to mistreat your brother. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any what? Grudge. Uh-oh. So I can disagree with somebody, but I can't bear a grudge against them. I can't bear a grudge against the children of thy people, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am Yahuwah. You shall keep my statutes. Thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind. Thou shalt not sow thy field with mingled seed. Neither shall a garment mingled of linen and woolen come upon thee. What is he saying? Why did he mix this in with relationships? And then he throws in clothing and animals. Because to Yahuwah, when he is speaking concerning order, he is speaking concerning all of his creation. Yeah. And he did not create... He created these things that would then later on become fabrics, and he wanted them to be pure. So when you wear linen, you wear linen, right? Linen, linen shirt, right? Linen, that is it, not mingled, because it creates an impurity. You have two different fiber types. So it's not the same uh, garment as one that is exclusive. And that is a picture of compromise or mixing. And he does not like that, in case you didn't know that. Uh, so he is very... Uh, clear about keeping things pure and in fact he tells us to think on those things which are pure honest and of good report so this is very much in his thinking and when he talks about love he, he does not separate that from order many times people think of love as mushy and order is over here like mean and things have to be orderly like love's got nothing to do with that no love commands order love says chaos or hurt people Order will help people. Order is better. So love orders. Love puts things decently and in order. Now, there's a lot of people that think that by the Spirit, things should be just chaotic. But that's not true. In fact, everything in the Torah and everything he has taught us is to take us from chaos and bring us into his kingdom, which is very ordered and very structured and very organized. Amen. Much more so than anything you see on earth today. And so he tells you that you should keep his statutes and not avenge or bear any grudge. Now, why would you not avenge your brother? Well, first of all, you're supposed to love your brother as yourself, right? So you're not supposed to be tail bearing. That is a form of hatred. So if you're gossiping and trying to get people to hate or reproach your brother or your sister, then you are guilty of hating your brother. So if you're trying to get other people mad at your brother, you are guilty, guilty, just put a big old G, guilty of creating a tail bear against your brother or bearing reproach against your brother or sister. This is inappropriate. Uh, we are all forgiven and we should be looking to extend forgiveness and mercy, not extend judgment. I mean, judgment is automatic. We don't have to extend that. That comes because the Holy Ghost brings, convicts us of sin, righteousness and judgment notice whose job that is that is not your job that is his job amen so the holy ghost is going to convict people 
of sin, righteousness, and judgment. My job, your job, all of our job is to simply speak the truth in love. I mean, and then let people make up their own minds. So this is why it's important for us when we speak the truth to only speak in principles. Only speak in principles. This is how you avoid conflict, saints. If you go tell somebody straight to their face, this is what you should do, one, two, and three, you're going to have a conflict. And if that person even listens to you, they're, they're listening religiously and not by revelation. So they're doing what you commanded them to do, not what, they re what was revealed to them that they should do. This is not as good. It may still have positive results, but it won't be long-lasting. Much better is the revelation that comes inside the vessel. This is why it's important that we communicate in principle form. When we communicate in principles, we have a hard time arguing. Thou shalt not kill. We can all agree on that. Yeah. See that? See how easy that was? Now, whether or not a particular person is actually guilty of actually killing someone, that's a, in, uh, an isolated incident and uh, bears facts and so on and so forth. There's, there's a lot that would have to be investigated to determine the guilt of someone. That is a lot of detail. But what we can agree on is the principle. Thou shalt not kill. You see how easy it is for us to come into agreement when we stay on principles. Much harder for us to come into agreement when we're examining details. Because we have, we're human, so human beings have a tendency to make presumption to their own best interests. So reviewing anything, they'll make anything that's a gap, any, any area that is not clear, they'll make the presumption to their own best interests or to lend to their argument. Uh, it takes extreme honesty, and I mean major wisdom and discipline, to push your own opinion to the side, to push your own preference of an answer to the side, and to love the truth. That takes a discipline, a fire in your hands, a, a burning in your heart that doesn't care where it lands. And that's hard to have. Most people don't have that. They don't. And, and I'll tell you why it's so hard to have, because it costs you so much in your own ego, in your own name being great, in your own benefit. And it's hard for people to work against their own benefit. Amen? And so it's not an easy thing. It's counter the flesh completely. Where the flesh is in perpetual survival mode, save me, right? Get me saved. A savior, a son of Elohim is not saying that. A son of Elohim is save them. How can I be used to save them? Whereas the carnal man, watch the difference, save me. Please save me. See that? Sons of Elohim, carnal man. Big difference. We are crucified with him. Nevertheless, we live. Yet not I. Mashiach and his anointed, his anointing lives in me. The life that I now live. I live by the faith of the Son of Elohim, who gave himself for me. This is our example. Not everybody bless me, but I bless everybody. I'm going to say that again. Because most people go to church with everybody bless me. Right? Everybody please yeah. bless me. I want to go to church that blesses me the most. I want to go to church where I like the music. I want to go to a church where I like the chairs. Okay? It's, they're not going with, and I know I've been this, doing this for a while, and most ministers will tell you that, that we have to help them think about their brethren. Yeah. Right? They come into the kingdom, they're grateful for the message of salvation, but then they miss the message of salvation. Yeah. They're grateful for their benefit, but they forgot what it is that, to be in the kingdom. Now let me slow this down, saints, because when he says you do not do this to your neighbor, who's he talking about? He's talking about all your brothers and sisters in Messiah. Yep. That means your mouth comes off them as soon as they get saved. Mouth comes off. You're like, well, I'm not going to talk on him. Why not? Because he's a baby. And you're who is going to teach him. And if I see error in that brother, I'm going to pray for him. And then I'm going to wait. Now, if you're a social media friend, you should be able to wait like this from a long distance. And just wait for the revelation. I remember watching some guys and they're running codes and they're doing all this stuff. And they're still talking about a pre-tribulation rapture. I just said, okay, I'll just wait here. I didn't do anything about that. I just waited here. Why? Because I know the truth is like a lion. Yeah. Just let it out. It'll do its thing. And sure enough, what happened? Oh, wait, maybe we're wrong about that. 
Oh, wait, maybe we need to think about that. See? That's why you don't need to bother with all of it. Just let him do it by his spirit. Amen? And instead, pray for one another. Love on one another. And if I see error, first thing I do is I pray, I seek his face, and then I wait. Why? Because the truth is like a lion. Just let it out. <laughs> it's like Aaron. It's like uh, Aaron's staff. It'll just eat all the other staffs. Just, <laughs> just gobble, gobble, gobble. <laughs> bye, bye, liars. Bye, bye, lies. Amen. And then humble-hearted people will say, "Ooh, I was wrong about that. I was wrong about that pre-trib. Yeah." I was wrong about that. Now, there's a lot of pastors that are not repenting fast enough. Your congregations will come for you. Uh, you your congregations are going to come for them lies. Just letting you know now. I warned you 20 years ago. been warning you every time I get. And uh, I keep warning my brother, I love you. And I don't want to see you. I don't want to see that fade on you. Uh, but I'm telling you right now, ahead of time. Because he warned me. He told me that. He showed it to me. And uh, it was not a pretty picture. Uh, so those that have been... You know, doubling down on their on their Babylonian lies because uh, they're afraid of one problem. They're about to run into another problem. See, they didn't want to tell you the truth. A lot of them didn't want to tell you the truth about pagan holidays because of the money. Straight up. Yeah. Just right. straight up. Just let me cut to the chase. If I wanted to raise three times as much money every year, just shut up and don't say nothing about those two holidays. And just talk around it. Yeah. And we would have three times, maybe five times the support that we have today. Okay? And instead, we're like, mm, it costs us. So? So what? I don't care. I'm going to tell the truth whether or not you support it or not. Um, if I have to go out there and pull the money out of the matrix to support the ministry and keep on going, I will. Those that know me, you know that. I may. And so, I don't like anybody out giving me competition okay I love my father oh man nobody I don't like nobody out giving me hallelujah it's a race <laughs> amen amen so if somebody comes along and wants to give I'm like I'm trying to get some of my blessing I'm trying to get some of my blessing all right I'll let you have a little bit see if you're real I mean because they all think you're after their money and see the fake ones are all after your they they love Babylon they love Babylon. Them, them hirelings, oh my goodness, they love Babylon. But those, but the true servants of Yahuwah, <laughs> they have zero love for Babylon. They have zero love for Egypt. If they get any Egyptian money, they turn it into stuff right away. Somebody hands you, you know, a true servant of Yahuwah Elohim hands him $100,000 or some crazy amount of money. He don't hang on to it or buy himself suits. Changes of clothing in Babylon. No, no, no. New no. New cars. Okay. <laughs> Not unless you're flipping them. <laughs> he doesn't do that. What does he do? He does things that are for other people. I mean, that's a telltale sign, saints. It's a, it's a just absolute telltale sign. Whether or not the love of Yahuwah is in their heart. If they're only thinking about themselves. And so this is why it's so important. For us to be filled with his spirit. What is his spirit going to do? It's going to make us be servants of other people. Mm -hmm. I think that's why a lot of people don't want to get filled with his spirit. Because they know what he's going to do to them. He might send them to Africa. He might send them off to do missions. He might send them off there. He might. You better run. Because he'll change your whole life. Yeah. yeah. So if you're not sure, go ahead and stand back there for a little bit. Back away from the, t back away from the screen. You might get filled with the Holy Ghost. Back up. Back up. You don't want to stand too close to the screen. You might get filled with the Holy Ghost. Then who knows what he might send you to do? Who knows what he might have you sell? Who knows what he might have you say? Who knows what he might send you to do? Only he knows. Oh, I can understand why a lot of people are afraid. Back away. You don't want to get too full. <laughs> you might end up who knows where. <laughs> I love it. And so you see, saints, he is calling us. To keep his statutes and remember not to avenge. And this is a time when the avenger is coming. So the uh, Jubilee avenger is on his way. And there's a lot of anger and hostility. And people are, and I talked about this last week. I said, yeah, you can be angry, but sin not. So you have that heat. You're like, oh, I hate these pedophiles and these wicked people and these this and that, right? Okay, I understand you have hostility. But remember 
that we are to honor him and we are to love our brethren, to give our full hearts over to them, to serve them, amen, to bless them, to encourage them and strengthen them in everything we do, amen. And so saints, this is not a joke. This is as serious as it gets. And I believe that the Avenger of the Jubilee is on his way. He is manifesting right now. And uh, But when we bear a grudge, when we get upset, I mean, when we are unhappy, if you will, and we start to treat our brethren with that sort of, what does mama call it? Don't become bitter Peter. She says, don't be bitter Peter. <laughs> don't be bitter. You know, you can't get bitter. You got to stay happy, even though some people might betray you. It's par for the course. There's some people that are half in, half out, drives you bananas. Yeah. I don't care what you're doing. You could be going to wash the car. You ever take a child with you that's not really with you? Doesn't that child drive you nuts? Yeah. You got to move that child from the middle to hot. You got to be like, get over here, boy. Get over here, daughter. Come on, help me out with this. And then they're like, oh, okay. And they go from middle to hot. Usually you got to take the electronics away. Just saying. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and all of a sudden they really help, right? <laughs> but see, what happens if you just get all in, inside, you start getting, what happens? You get bitter. And, and so he's warning you ahead of time. He says, don't avenge and don't bear any grudges. Don't do that. Don't get bitter. Instead, Matthew 18, that situation. Go talk to your brother. Go talk to your sister and correct it and re re resolve it. And if you can't, because some people are just hard to deal with, then bless them and just maintain some distance so you don't offend each other. That's not that hard. I mean, but love is required of us. And that's what we're going to get through in this series is that it's not optional. Saints, I know some people think that they can take and they can like use their love as a bargaining chip. But and when I get done with this series, not only are you going to understand that that's not true, but you're going to understand your commandment, the commandment to love. Amen. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, let's take a quick look there very quickly. And he says, now these are the commandments, the statutes and the judgments, which Yahuwah, your Elohim, commanded to teach you that you might do them in the land whether you go to possess it. Mm -hmm. So remember the book of Hebrews tells us that the gospel was being preached in the wilderness. So this is the gospel, saints. This is the gospel, okay? That he's telling you, keep his commandments and statutes. If you are willing and obedient, you're going to eat the good of the land, right? He's telling you, just obey him, and everything will be great. That thou mayest fear Yahuwah thy Elohim to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son, and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily as Yahuwah Elohim of thy fathers hath promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, Yahuwah our Elohim is one Yahuwah. And thou shalt love Yahuwah thy Elohim with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might, with all thy strength. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. And when thou walkest by the day. And when thou liest down and when thou risest up. And so saints, he is telling us plain and simply that this is how we demonstrate his love. Let's back up a little bit and let's take a look at this. Because again, um, if we don't slow this down, we can talk ourselves into thinking we don't need to pay attention here. Now, I want to just encourage you because this is what Paul, okay, told Timothy to do. What you're doing right now with me, what we're all doing together, is exactly what Paul told Timothy to do. Study the Holy Scriptures, for they are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Right? Okay. Was he talking about the letter he was writing to Timothy? No. He's talking about the Holy Scriptures. The Torah, the Torah and the Tanakh, the Holy Scriptures and the Prophets. <clears throat> so he is, saying, he is saying to Timothy, hey, you know these things back here that a lot of those other people say are not important? Okay, those evil men and seducers who wax worse, deceiving and being deceived, those lovers of money, right? Remember, he's warning Timothy about all this. And he's saying, remember those guys? Remember I told you about them? Don't do them. You, you, by contrast, you study to show yourself approved. Study what? Yeah. Ah. Study what? 
He couldn't have been talking about the New Testament. He couldn't have been talking about any of the Gospels. None of them were written yet. When he was talking to Timothy, none of the Gospels were written yet. Not one. They were all written after. Okay? So he wasn't talking about that. He wasn't talking about the letter he wrote to the Romans, or the letter he wrote to the Corinthians, or the letter he wrote to the Thessalonians. What's he talking about when he tells Timothy that all Scripture is inspired? He's not talking about the letter he's writing. He's writing the letter to tell him about something. And he's telling him that this, the Torah, the scriptures are inspired. And by the Holy Spirit, which you now have, you will be able to open the scriptures. Before they were sealed, you couldn't open them. Now you not only can open it and read things here in the, ter in the text, but even under the text, you're going to start to find things. Amen? Because it, they've been opened to you. Amen? And so he tells us that these are the commandments and statutes and judgments which Yahuwah, your Elohim commanded. Now, if you think Yahushua HaMashiach came down here to disband all these things, you, you would then call him an unfaithful servant. So he, let me see if I got this right. Yahuwah Elohim, who gave us all these commandments, sent his son down here to just throw them all away? See how crazy that logic is? It's ridiculous. It's not the truth. In fact, he even said... I came not to destroy the Torah, but to fulfill. Amen. And all who walk in his Mashiach anointing fulfill the scripture too. That's what we do. Amen. Many, 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 many houses out there just reading the scripture. There's only a few houses actually fulfilling the scripture. Okay, so that's a that's a thing to think about. And that's why it's important for you to find your fold. But then some people are not scripture fulfillers, in which case you belong in a fold of just readers. Amen. If you're not a scripture fulfiller, if you're a talker and not a doer, you belong with other talkers. You found your fold. I mean, how many know out sh people out shopping right now on Shabbat? They found their fold. Yep. Yeah, they already found their fold. They're with the people they're going to spend eternity with. Mm. How you like me now? You know, saints, we have got to stop playing around with this. And this is the real thing. And there's so many people that are, are thinking that it's 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 a uh, it's it's not a, a a serious matter where you spent where your fold is, but Shabbat, <laughs> this is a holy convocation. How are you going to tell him later on? I was just kidding. I didn't mean to be with those other people. You were with them week in week out, week after week after week in the mall, in the store, over here, over here. How are you going to convince him? That you really know, really know, really you are one of the obedient ones. You can't. You see what see what's happening? He's letting them pick their own folds. Everybody's picking their spot. And this house, this house is a very different house. This is a house that is on missions. And not most people, oh my goodness, they're scared of missions. They're scared of anything that pulls on them too much. We regularly sell all we have because we love the saints. So if this is too extreme for you, then find a different house I guess I don't know what else to say I want to say lukewarm or less less hot but but not necessarily right so you may be going to a house that just doesn't have this doesn't have our mission has a different mission so let's say it like that but you got to find your fold saints um, and pray that it's not a lukewarm fold right so he says these commandments and judgments that he gave you that thou that you would fear Yahuwah thy Elohim to keep all his commandments so there's an absence of fear isn't there and Isaiah 33 one of the things he spoke to us about the land that he's called us to consecrate, right, for his purpose, he told me a treasure would be upon the land. And I started to go, well, what do you mean by that? And we dig in the scripture. What does the scripture say? The treasure of the fear of Yahuwah. Ah, ha, ha, ha. What they have in the first century, the fear of Yahuwah. When Ananias and Sapphira fell down dead, the fear of Yahuwah came upon them. Okay? And he added such to the ecclesia, such as should be saved daily, right? Because the fear of Yahuwah was there. And, in, and again, this has to happen again. The dread of him, the dread of being rejected should hit everybody. And they should all be double checking the double check of the double check, double check. Right? Because we're supposed to be without spot or wrinkle. Now, he got divorced against a very spotty wife. He gave her a bill of divorcement because she did not keep his commandments and did not keep his statutes. Yep. She was a wayward wife who was adulterous went and played the whore and the harlot with other Elohim. 
And what did he do? He gave her a bill of divorcement and said, go over there. I put you away. Yeah, that's a hard word. Now he wants to get married. He's got a wedding supper prepared. Who's he looking for? Those who are without spot or wrinkle. How do you get there? Only one way. Love. Love is the only way you get there. If you're trying to be religious, no way. If you're trying to be mean to everybody else so you get accepted, like, they're bad, they're bad, they're bad. Not me. I mean, no, that's not going to work. I mean, he's not impressed by the person that says, uh, I'm, they're bad, they're bad, they're bad, they're bad, they're bad. Not me. He's not impressed by that. He's impressed by the person that beats his chest. That's what we look for. We look for the person that accepts responsibility, not the person making excuses. Amen. Right? And so we need to be a people that accept responsibility for what we've done. And that is why love tells the truth. Love's not going to lie to you and tell you you're better than you are. Love's not going to come and tell you you're all good when you need to repent. Love's going to tell you the truth. Love's going to give it to you straight. But here's the other thing love's going to do. Love's going to walk with you. Love's not just going to throw you some word over the shoulder, okay, and then take off on you. That's not love. So love will walk with you. Love will say, here's the right way. Walk in it. And since you probably have never done it before, let's take a walk together. Let's you and me go down this road. That's what love does. And that's what we're all commanded to do one for another. Now, when he talks about us being in covenant, right? And he tells us that we're supposed to observe and to do these things. And he's telling us that he is one, that Yahuwah Elohim is one Elohim. He's talking about the Godhead, right? He's talking about the fullness of who he is and the fullness of his spirit, the son, everything. And by the way, the angels are one with him too. I mean, the ones that passed the Lucifer test really passed. So they're one with him. In fact, he warns us saying, don't provoke my angels, got my name now. He will not pardon you. He will not pardon you. <laughs> okay. I will pardon you, but he won't pardon you. Okay? I have to come and defend you against that angel. He is so righteous. I have to get in front of him. How many know when Moses came to get the Torah, that Yahuwah had to protect it. Yahuwah had to protect Moses. Amen. Because what he was coming for was so holy and righteous. Don't get it twisted. These angels, <laughs> this is not a joke, saints. And so when you love Yahuwah Elohim with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and so many people say, I love him, I love him, I love him. Okay? And again, because they know the benefit of loving him. They know that if they say they love him, right, then they get saved because that's the first and greatest commandment. Except, how many know that if you say you love him and keep not his commandments, now you're guilty of lying. Now you have a new charge, fraud, upon the holy court. You are guilty of fraud upon the holy court. And you're like, whoa, what, what do you mean? You testified that you you bear you that you love him, but you don't keep his commandments. The scripture is clear. That charge will come against you. Amen. And he's saying, and he would say he loved him, keep not his commandments is a liar. That was apostolically written. I don't have the power to unseat that. I mean, so it means it's settled business in the kingdom. If you say you love him and keep not his commandments, you're going to be called a liar at judgment day. Plain and simple. I mean, and so those that were in ministry, those that were saying to people, oh, you don't have to worry about that. Or, you know, he did away with all these things. Well, in that case, the whole New Testament's got a big old smiley face on it. And we, there's no need to read any of it. Either he did that or he didn't. Because if what you're thinking is, because he went to the cross, I no longer have to worry about and seek after righteousness, you miss the whole message. He made a way for you who were seeking righteousness to actually get there. <laughs> he made a way for those that were actually pursuing to arrive. Because apart from him, you can't get to Father. So they were wasting their time sitting in a cave for 13 years. Wasting their time trying to ascend. Oh, I'm going to go up and I'm going to go up. You're not going anywhere. There's no man can reach the Father except through the Son. Amen. And so instead, they try to imagine themselves going around him. This is not just one group. This is all of them. All of them are trying to go around the Son. They're trying to steal from the Son, even though the Son is the Lord of the Shabbat. And I say it every week when they celebrate the first day of the week. As far as I'm concerned, all you're doing is celebrating the fall of man. You're poking fun or mocking 
that Adam fell and, uh, and turn it into a celebration. It doesn't mean that to average people, but it means those who are sitting in heaven, who watch these things, who these things are symbolic and important. The seventh day is important. It is the day of rest. It is the day he is ascribed for Yahusha to reign upon the earth. So when we celebrate it, we're celebrating that. Amen. And so saints understand that when he tells us to teach these things diligently to our children and to talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, when that lies down, and when you rise up, he's saying, this is the only thing I want you talking about. I want you to be consumed with this. I want this to be, this is what I'm wanting. Now, is he necessarily getting it? No, but he's telling you what he wants. I mean, that's no different than any man who's saying to a woman who is sitting across the table, well, what I really would love in a wife. I mean, if you really want to know what I would love in a wife. Oh, if you're, if you're, if you're inquiring what I would like in a wife, oh, well, then she would have to be one who, who diligently will teach my children the to command. You know, he's telling you. He's letting you know, oh, this is what I'm looking for, right? This is the bride that I want. Oh, I don't want another wayward wife. I already had one of those. Right. If you've ever had somebody cheat on you repeatedly and had your heart ripped out, stomped down on the ground, then you forgive this person, watch this now, and then bless them. Give them stuff, give them food, clothing, protect them, provide for them, and they cheat on you again and again. There comes a point at which you say, I'm going to let you go ahead and have what you want. You want the, you want the world? Go get the world. Bye. You want bail? Go get bail then. Since you kept cheating and going after bail, how many know he gave them over to bail? They still worshiping bail to this day. He gave him over to him. He said, you want to marry you want to marry that one? Go ahead. If he be Elohim, go worship him. Go ahead. Bye. He said, get out of here. Go ahead. But those of you that love him, right? He's pulling you to himself. Now, what's that? That's covenant. Now, let me explain something really quickly about covenant saints because I think people misunderstand this. So let me explain the way this covenant thing works. See, my brother Drew, right? He's a beautiful example. All right. If I have it, he has it. If he has it, I have it. I mean, we all on mission together. Okay. So, Brother Lucas, if he has it and I need it, I have it. If I have it and he needs it, he has it. That's, right. That's how it works. It doesn't matter if it's in my checking account. It don't matter if it's in my garage. It don't matter if it's in my basement. It don't matter where it is. Right. Whatever he needs, he's my covenant partner. Yep. Right? I have to help him. Yep. Okay? In the same way he has to help me. We have to do things together. That's what covenant looks like. That means what's yours is mine. That's what covenant means. That's not a mentality that most people want. Most people want to keep their own and just want him to bless them. Okay? Let me just tell you, self-centeredness is the reason for all the grief. Yeah. What's the name of that book? Self-centeredness is the root of all grief. The root of all grief. <laughs> the source of all your grief, right? Self-centeredness. Why? You're fighting him. You're fighting him. And there's an epidemic of self-centeredness in your world. So if you're not actively fasting, praying, and fighting against it, you're probably losing that fight. Yes. You're, I'm just warning you right now because this is one of those detox, pull ticks off you type of thing that you have to do all the time. And you have to constantly double check to make sure you're not falling into self uh, and, and uh, self-absorption, if you will. Uh, so where you're only concerned about your own things. And I'm seeing it in steroids right now where people are getting afraid. They're hearing about asteroids. They're hearing about this. They're hearing about and all they're caring about now. What about us? You want to you, you do you want to go to hell? Do you do you want to get judged harsh? No? Then stop worrying about other people. Or stop worrying about yourself and worry about other people. That's right. Okay? Lay your life down for others. You are, you are being told point blank here. Anyone who seeks to save his own life. Are we, are we clear? Gonna lose it. So this is love telling you the truth, saints. It's just, I'm just here to, to just share with you what he said. That's what the king said. Not my word, what the king said. He taught us this. Do not seek to save your own life. Don't do it. So what you're putting aside, if you lay up for yourself treasure here on earth, you already violated the king's command. You're in direct violation. But if you laid up for others, if you laid up to be a blessing, if you laid up so that you can minister, 
So like him in the same spirit, you are a savior. All right? You are many saviors on Mount Zion, right? He is in you. Him, in you, hope of glory, right? What are you going to do with that? What's he going to do? He's going to manifest himself. What's he probably going to He's going to go to a cross. That's what he's going to do. If he's inside of you, he's on his way to a cross. If he's inside of you, he's on his way to a mission. If he's inside of you, he's on his way to save somebody. He's on his way to deliver somebody. He's on his way to help somebody. He's on his way to pray for somebody. He's on his way to pull that brother out, pull that sister out. He's not thinking about himself. He's not sitting up thinking about what's going to happen to me. He's walking in love. And if that is what's in you, we will know. How will we know? Because we just watch. When you have seen the difference between selfish and anointed, it's just so different, so far apart, that it fools no one. No one can be fooled by that. I don't care even if you wanted to believe this person was not selfish. You would not be able to see you will, you will be able to see the difference. The self-centered love themselves. And they need to get saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because as soon as the Holy Spirit comes in there, and I mean the day the Holy Spirit arrives, you will stop thinking about yourself. That is the telltale sign that you are filled with the Holy Ghost. You are no longer consumed and preserving yourself. You're not mad at anybody offended about what they may have said to you. If you're offended, it's for other people. If you're mad, it's for something that happened over there. You're not worried about yourself. You're a dead man walking. Oh, man. Oh, man. I mean, you're crucified long ago. And so no threat matters. No evil, but, you know, no evil threat concerns you. What are you concerned about? Babies. You're concerned about children. People that don't know what you know. People that, that can't walk through walls. They can't walk through water. They can't take five loaves and two fish and multiply it. They don't have that kind of faith. I mean, they're not willing to stand there. And by the way, all those are trying to save themselves. Watch what happens to them. You got to be on mission, saints. You have to. I'm just giving this to you for free. Be on whatever he's doing because that's going to be filled with love for other people. And in the process, you will be working out your salvation with fear and trembling. But if you're only worrying about yourself, if the only person you're thinking about is, what am I going to do? How are we going to do it? How are we? Me, 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 me. And that's the only thing you're thinking about. Then this series is really going to be for you. This is really going to be a good word for you as we walk up to the fall feast. Because it is time to take your emphasis off yourself. Yeah. And it's time to begin to worship him. To point your attention toward him. Yeah. Now I know there's a lot of ministers out there. And a lot of ministries out there doing a lot of other things. But I'm not called to do all those other things. I'm called to serve and finish well. And so today I want to just again. One of the things I want to encourage you on. Is just to make sure that you are not thinking only about your own benefit. Now one of the things that happened to me this last week. Uh, which was very interesting. I got, I got a word from one of my brethren. And he was warning me. OK, so he warned me in advance of some other trick that was coming for me. And he warned me by sending me a word, letting me know that you will have those who will try to take you off course. I mean, and they will tell you they have a word like it's important. It's really important. you got to hear this. He warns me. And not just a couple days later, somebody comes along and says, you need to read this. You need to read it right now. <laughs> and I went, yeah, I don't think so. I think I was warned about you. And I think I'm going to take that little piece of paper and do this to it. Vertically file it. Bye. Right. Okay. And why? Because we need to be very careful in this hour of the voices that we listen to and the right. things that we allow to get into our spirit. Yeah. Because there's a lot of witchcraft out there. Witchcraft. That's what I call it. It's witchcraft. It's based in rebellion. It's an attempt to control other people using words. Poisoning their heart, getting them to do what they want instead of what he wants. Amen. Where he was very clear in his scripture about the anointing which abides within you will teach you everything you need to know. So turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 13 because here is another warning that we need to take very serious, uh, pay very serious attention to concerning those that are out there prophesying. And there's a ton of this. 
talking and prophesying is more than just saying thus saith Yahuwah or thus saith the Lord right it's also standing up on a video or broadcast talking okay and and speaking better be right and he says Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 1 if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give it thee a sign or a wonder. So this person could even use signs and wonders. Pay attention, saints. Because remember what he said. Many will come to me in that day saying, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in thy name and do many great and mighty works? Marvelous wonders they did. And he's going to tell them, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. And he said, and the sign and wonder come to pass. And, uh, it, and where he spoke unto thee saying, let us go after other Elohim which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams. For Yahuwah, your Elohim, proveth you. What? He's proving you. What? He's proving you. What's he doing? He's checking on you. He's checking on you. He sent that just to check you. To know whether you love Yahuwah, your Elohim, with all your heart and with all your soul. Oh, that's why this person came with the Kabbalah book. Okay, you shall walk after Yahuwah, your Elohim, and fear him, and keep his commandments, obey his voice, and you shall serve him and cleave. Hold tight onto him like a wife holds to her husband. Amen. Cleave onto him. Amen? And so it's hard to fool somebody like that because they go ask first before they eat. How many know that's how we got in trouble? Y'all didn't pray before you eat. <laughs> And so, hey, somebody wants to hand you a book. You need to read this. Okay? And you're just like, uh, how am I supposed to, what? I, you have to read this. You need to look at this. Wait, well, no, you better check first. That's right. Well, that saved me many curses. Amen. By just asking first. Many curses. Okay? And my covenant partner smiles and says, very good. You asked first. Good job. You know how many, he says to me, you know how many open first and then ask? Yeah. You have any idea how many open first? Yeah. Open that book first and then come and ask me? And then I have to decontaminate them. Now they're contaminated and they failed the test. They failed this exam that I told them that I was going to give them. And they failed. How many know he loves it when he sees one pass? He puts you in a different pile. He's like, oh, okay. Oh, you paying attention. Okay, we're going to do a little something different with you. You're, ooh, you might be a keeper. You might be chosen. Amen. And those that think they know more than him, they think their word is supreme above his. Let me warn you, no one's word is above Yahuwah. No one's word is above Mashiach. Amen. And so those who think that they have power to speak above their pay grade, will find out that they are in deep, deep trouble. No, this is the hour for great loyalty. This is the hour when you come all the way into the covenant, which means all you have is his. I know you only want all of his stuff, but he's telling you that covenant is two ways, right? So if he says to me, oh, you know that truck you have over there? You were gonna sell it? Oh no, I want you to go and give it to that person. He gets it because it belongs to him. Oh, you know that money you have over there? I want you to go do this. Okay. He gets it because it belongs to him. Right. Amen. Oh, you know this thing? Why? Because I'm his son. Right. right? But if you're not, if you argue with him, he's going to skip you and go find one that will obey. Yeah. That's right. Yes, he will. He sent me on many missions that other people didn't want to do. Yeah. And he sent me not first. I wasn't the first one he called. Yeah. And that happens, saints. So people forfeit their blessings. They do. They forfeit blessing. And in, in the case of Saul, we saw that. Now, we have a president up there who, as far as I'm concerned, is operating in a spirit of Saul. I'm just going to come out blank, point blank and tell you. Love the man. Praying for him. Hope he does okay. But he's got a Saul spirit. All right. And so because of that, he's going to make certain mistakes. We know that. We know that going in. And so we're not expecting him to act like David. How many know what I'm talking about? Yep. We don't expect him to act like David. We expect him to act like Saul, yes. a man, which does a lot of damage to the enemy. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't useless, okay? He was effective to a certain degree. He just made mistakes he shouldn't have made. Yeah. And this is the difference between Saul and David. Mm -hmm. And this is something that we need to understand. So turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 13, because again, he said, thou shalt love. 
Amen. In 1 Samuel 17, uh, 13, and verse 6, it says, When the men of Israel saw that they were in a strait, for the people were distressed. And this is when um, they, were, they were waiting for Samuel up on a hill. And the Philistines were coming. And they were not in a good spot. And so they started to get a little bit stressed out. How many of you have felt a little bit stressed out? How many of you are starting to see um, some things happening in the earth? Some of you are starting to see your enemies are gathering strength. Some of you are starting to become distressed. And then the people did hide themselves in caves, in thickets, and in rocks, in high places, and in pits. And some of the Hebrews went over Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. As for Saul, he was in Gilgal, and all the people followed him, trembling. Oh, oh, oh. Because the enemies are coming, right? Because the New World Order's coming, right? Yeah, because the beast is coming, right? Yeah, the devil's coming! Oh, no! And he tarried seven days, not five days. Hallelujah. Not nine days, not eight days. Seven days, according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me, and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering, the burnt offering, just as soon as he got done doing what he thought was the right thing to do, behold, Samuel. So all he had to do was wait a little longer, but he got impatient, didn't he? And Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? What did you do? What were you thinking? And Saul said, uh, 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 well, because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and, and thou camest not, uh, so I'm blaming you, because you were late, so it's your fault. Notice he's not accepting responsibility. He's giving everybody else's, it's not my fault. Yeah. Watch this now. Not my fault. Somebody else. See, what happened was, see, 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 what happened was, the people were scattered from me, and see, what happened was, thou camest not when the days were appointed, and what happened was, um, the Philistines were gathered, and what happened was, uh, they, they were at Mikmash, Mikmash, you know, Mikmash. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> and therefore, see, what happened was, and therefore, I said to myself, the Philistines will come down now upon me, to Gilgal. And I have not made supplication unto Yahuwah. Doesn't that sound just so good? I mean, it's just like, doesn't that sound just so logical? It's like, he makes it sound so good. Okay, I, I didn't do nothing wrong. I, 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 listen to what I, and some people think that if they just keep talking, it's going to get better. Look at this. He just thinks if he just keeps explaining, right? If only I would just explain to the prophet, right? He should have thrown himself on the ground and said, I am so sorry. I should not have done that. But no, he decided to justify himself. I've not made supplication on you. I forced myself. Look at this. She says, I forced myself. I know. It wasn't the right way. So I had to force myself. <laughs> like even in their sin, they try to make themselves look magnanimous. Even in their disobedience, they try to make themselves look like they're not doing so bad. They're, they're pretty good. They're pretty good people. Okay, I know I'm not being faithful, but, you know, I do occasionally give to poor people on the end of the freeway. Doesn't that count? Occasionally, somebody at the store, I don't throw a little money in the jingle box. Doesn't that count? Okay, I forced myself, therefore, and, and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, thou hast done some stupidness. Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of Yahuwah thy Elohim, which he commanded thee. For now would Yahuwah have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now the kingdom shall not continue. Yahuwah hath sought him a man after his own heart. And Yahuwah hath commanded him to be captain over his people. Because thou hast not kept that which Yahuwah commanded thee. Oops. See, when you worry more about what the people are going to tell you, I was going to do it, but then my, my, 
my brother, my cousin, my nephew, my da 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 da, they started talking. I heard the word I was going to follow, but then I started listening to all these other voices. Yeah. Okay? And the Yakka Muffins were all running. Yak, 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 yak a muffin. Okay? Yeah. They babble, 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 babble on. Right? And they talked you right out of the word of Yahuwah. Mark chapter 4. Persecution. Affliction. Slander. Gossip. All these things choke the word. Keep you from doing it. So what happened? Those people did not fulfill. They did not follow hard. And he told Saul, he said, you, you, because you did your own thing. Because when it was time, you see, righteousness says wait. And he said, I can't wait. I got to do this myself. Saul was not anointed for that job. Samuel was. And when he tried to do somebody else's anointing, he ended up losing his own. When he tried to do someone else's calling, he ended up losing his own. Okay? There's certain things I don't touch. Doesn't mean I can't do them, just that that's not what I'm called to do. You gotta stay within your metron. These days, in these last days, people that don't learn this lesson will perish. So I don't have to worry about it because they'll, you know, you'll see people that'll fall because they got outside there sphere of influence, their anointing, where they're supposed to be uh, walking. And that's going to keep happening. Saints is going to happen at a greater clip because, again, they will not repent and they teach others their rebellious ways. As he said, we cannot be rebellious. We must humble ourselves and ask hard questions. And even if that means, wow, that hit me hard. Oh, boy, I thought I was right. <laughs> I was on the phone with somebody and they're like, well, that didn't go the way I thought it was going. <laughs> Call me up with a head of steam like he's right. And now the person's wrong, right? And they go into their story and they go, well, actually, uh, a couple just minor things. You might want to, like, just saying. And as soon as you point out, oh, man. Man, I thought I was right. I thought I was good. <laughs> and it's kind of funny when it happens, right? Saul thought he was right. Saul thought for sure Samuel was going to go, ah, oh, that's okay. No problem. I'll take care of it. It's all right, Saul. Right? That's what most people expect. That's okay. No big deal. But no big deal. Right? Okay? That's what they expected in the garden too. But it was a big deal. That's what Cain thought he was going to get. But it was a big deal. How many know that Noah was building an ark? Only eight people. Eight out of all the people that saw him build it. All the people that watched him buy lumber. All the people that watched him manufacture this thing. All the people watching him, hearing him nail. <laughs> and only eight people got in. Goes to tell you, just build the ark. You don't worry about who gets in it. That's right. yeah. Amen. You just be found faithful. Amen. And so uh, he is warning the children of Israel here about this by, by, by example. Because, again, if he'll take, because why is he doing this to the king? He's saying, if the king won't obey me, I'll take even his kingdom, much less everybody under him. Mm -hmm. So he had to deal with the king because that was his word to everybody. Don't touch what is not meant for you to do. I set people in the house as it pleases me, Yahuwah says. So when he set Samuel in the house, it pleased him. Samuel is the one that brings that offering. I want my Zadok to bring me my offering. Yes. I want my Zadok may minister to me. The Levites may not. That's why I don't listen to Levites, by the way. I love them immensely, but I don't listen to them. I won't follow them to the bathroom because they're confused. But... um. But I love him. But we follow the Zadok. Because he specifically said, but the Zadok's men minister to me. Right? Now everybody's called to that. But as for this house, that's how we walk. Okay? It's about him. It's not about the people. We love you all, but we are focused on him. I mean, focused on him. And so that is something that a lot of people get uncomfortable with. Because they can sense that they're second. They're not first. Now, what I've seen among others is that they make the people first. Yeah. And the people like that. So if that's the kind of fold you want, we're not it. No, we're, not. we're not it. We will not make you first. No. Never. No. no, no, never will we make the people first. Always him. And that is what I believe is a Zadok heart. Uh, as spoken of in the book of Ezekiel, it will be the Zadok, the righteous, 
those he has set apart for this who will minister to him. I mean, and this is talking about the new temple, the one coming, not the old ones. So he's speaking future tense here. Hallelujah. I mean, and that's exactly what we see coming right now. And who was the Zadok? But Mashiach himself, who is consecrated for father, for father. And because he had his priorities straight, because he was first belonging to father, then he could be a blessing to everyone around him. But how many know that if you're always just trying to be a blessing to everyone around you, you're going to run out. You're going to go operating in your flesh real fast. You first must seek first the kingdom of Yahuwah Elohim. Then you can deal with everybody else. Somebody say amen. amen. In Matthew chapter 5, we're going to turn now to the king's words. Because again, nobody is above the king. Amen. And he says in verse 38, You have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, that you resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn him the other also. Did you see that? Resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn him the other one. If any man shall sue thee at law to take and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. You should not be contributing to these lawsuits and fights in courts. Period. And whosoever shall compel thee to go with him a mile, go with him too. Give him that askest of thee, and from him that would borrow thee, turn not thou away. You have heard that it had been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. So he is specifically dealing with the subject of loving your neighbor. But he gives us some different instructions than we may want to hear. Now, I want to just suggest something to you because he says something very specific here about love. And he commands us not to behave like the rest of the people do. This is not a suggestion. In fact, when he says, thou shalt love, that is not up for debate. That is not something you can decide if you feel like it. Some people use love as a way to control their relationship. So, you know, if they're not happy with you today, they start pulling back their love, yeah. right? And if you do what they want, then they love you more, okay? Messiah is like, no, no, I want you to love even your enemies. Love is not something you get to play with like that. Yeah. And that just ruins it for some folks because they're like, oh. But how am I going to get people to do what I want? <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe you shouldn't. But, and that's just it, is that we have these things that we do in the flesh that he is correcting. That's why he came. He's coming to correct things that we thought were okay. We thought no big deal. Apparently, they're a big deal. I mean, and he says, if any man will sue thee at law, this is a common thing. How many believers are up offended? And ready to go to war, ready to fight with one another, biting and devouring one another. Instead of saying, no, that's okay. I know you ripped me off, but it's all right. I'm letting it go. Why? Because you're wasting energy on that. And it's only going to make you bitter anyway. Amen. So he's warning you ahead of time. Don't even go down this road. Instead, own it. Give him your cloak also. Yes, you for your coat, give him your cloak also. Amen. Why? Because you own that now. You own that action. No one's taking anything from you. You're giving. You turned it around. You said, oh, you're going to take it anyway, so I may as well just go ahead and give it and take ownership of the giving part. That's a wise son because you can't turn them down. Who shall ever compel you to go with him a mile, go with him twain? So if I say, come with me a mile, you have to come. If you're a son of Elohim and you heard this word, you're coming because I compelled you. Amen. And see, you're going to go too. That's how I know you're a true son. You heard him and you do it. But then there's those that don't do it. Doesn't matter what he says, they're not doing it. Except when they when he hear the only thing they want to hear Messiah say is, Enter thou into the joy of Yahuwah. That's all they want to hear. Anything else he has to say, they're plugged ears, they don't want to hear nothing. Alright? And when he said, Give to him that ask it. Somebody asks you, you need to give it. Okay? That is hard on people because they're like, oh. Man, you mean I got to give to people who ask? Yes, that's what the Messiah said. And and he that would borrow thee, turn not thou away. Oh, man. Don't I have, isn't it subjective? Can I debate this? The king said it. 
Think like an angel. The king said it. Again, think like an angel. <laughs> right? Is this up for debate? Is this up for discussion? Only on earth is this up for discussion. Only on earth, not in heaven. In heaven is not up for discussion. Just saying. And he says to us that you should love your neighbor and hate thine enemy. That people will say, love your neighbor, hate thine enemy. But he says, love your enemies and pray for those who curse you and despitefully use you. To pray for them is the highest way of loving. You're going to take your relationship with the Most High and use it. Use your juice, if you will. Use your, your favor that you've been given. And you're going to go pray for people that hate you. Pray for people that despitefully use you. Amen. And that's the best way to heap coals of fire upon their head. And if they hate you, they'll stop hating you. Even people that hate me, I say, well, you know, I feel sorry for them. I love them. I'm sorry they feel that way. Right. Why? Because you're praying for them. You're blessing them. Okay? If somebody hates you and you're like, I hate them too, guess what? Your spirit you don't have. All right? And so and in Matthew 22, coming in for a landing here, uh, Matthew 22, verse 36, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Which is the great? Why is he asking this if the commandments are about to be destroyed? Why did Messiah just say, I ah, don't worry about it? See, I'm going to a cross here soon, and I'm just going to wipe all those out. No, that's not what he said. Yahushua said unto him, Thou shalt love Yahuwah thy Elohim with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. So this is the most important one. This is why he said the Zadok will minister to me because they stayed faithful to him when the others went astray after the people like Saul. Mm -hmm. See, Saul listened not to the voice of Yahuwah, which was coming through the prophet, but instead to the voices of people who were telling him, you got to do it this way. You better do something. What's going to happen? People are leaving. Hey, he's... But Saul should have had so much confidence in Yahuwah that if everybody left and it was just him and Samuel, them two alone could whoop the Philistines. That's how much confidence he should have had in Yahuwah. Amen? That if he was told to wait for Samuel, to Samuel he will wait. And when Samuel arrived, he would say, well, I, I was going to do it myself, but I knew better than to do that. I'm not touching your anointing. Mm -mm. So I'm just waiting here. The Philistines are coming, though. Just, just saying. And Samuel would have handled that. And he would have stayed, his kingdom would have been established forever. But no, he decided that he could cross into someone else's anointing. You see that? To do any old job. Okay? That did not go well for him. And it will not go well for anybody who does not stay inside their metron, inside their sphere where they belong. And so when he commands us to love one another, that is not just saying, oh, mushy things. It's also respecting one another's office and calling. It is the respect that he was meant to show to Samuel in the same way we are meant to show respect one to another. We are not even supposed to bring a reproach. Amen. We're definitely not supposed to talk or gossip about one another or tear one another down in any way. Yet this happens daily in the body of Messiah. And so the example that I believe he's calling us apostolically as a house to demonstrate is that despite what anybody says about you or whatever anybody does to you or however they behave, you are commanded to love. You are not, it's not a suggestion. It's not something that you can decide. It is, you say, yeah. You feel, yeah. You in the kingdom, yeah. Love your neighbor. You say, yeah. You, you in, yeah. You who are you, Elohim? Yeah, love your neighbor. I don't like my neighbor. I didn't ask you to like him. How many know that you can love people you don't like? I have a lot of people I don't like, but I love them anyway. I don't like what they're doing. I don't like how they're acting. I don't like some of their choices. I don't like their decisions. I don't like the way they think. But I still love them. I mean, he didn't say you had to like everybody. He just said you had to love them. So love them intentionally, on purpose. Make a decision. Say, I'm going to love that person whether I like them or not. I mean, and how many know that that is how we know you are a true son of Elohim? It is not based on your personal preferences. You are obeying the commandment. Thou shalt love. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for every single person who hears this broadcast. I thank you for all my brothers and sisters who are right now coming into your love. 
coming into a level of your love they'd never experienced before. And Father, it's so easy for us to think about only ourselves and to preserve ourselves. But Father, let this be removed from us by your spirit, that we would no longer care or concern ourselves with our own lives. But instead, like Mashiach warned us, we would lay our lives down for our brethren. Instead of caring only for ourselves, where our own hearts would fail us for fear, instead, Father, let us already be crucified. Let us already lay our lives down today. Let this be the last day we concern ourselves with our own preservation. And instead, let us be like that one who lays his life down for another. Hallelujah. As our example, as our Messiah demonstrated for us, and as the apostles who went after, demonstrating also in losing their lives in brutal ways. So, Father, I pray, let all of these who hear, all of them who are part of the remnant, lay down their lives for the sake of the household of faith, for the sake of those who need a good example. And I pray, Father, that you would cause this house to rise to be an extraordinary example of loving our neighbor. In Mashiach's holy name, amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How many out here want to be a good example of loving our neighbor, amen? Doing things for other people that they didn't even know you were doing for them until after you did it. <laughs> How many know that blowing a trumpet on the Mount of Olives for 350 million people who didn't even know I was there is a demonstration of loving your neighbor as you love yourself, amen? And this is the kind of thing that we have to do. We have to not care about if anyone even notices. No one should even, it shouldn't even matter if anyone even sees what you do because you're not doing it for that. If you're doing it for views, for accolades, for likes or loves or whatever, you're doing it for the wrong reason. You're laying your life down because you obey your father, because you are a son. And a son always does what he sees his father doing. We are to follow him. Amen. What do you see your father doing? Go ye and do likewise. Amen. May Yahuwah bless each and every one of you. And remember, Yahusha HaMashiach, he alone is king of kings. Amen.
Feel